That's the first one. The second thing is in your profit margin. Let's take energy for example, right? SDG and E is the one that keep my lights on at my place. Now, let's say you converted my $100 a month power bill for my home. Now, the commissionable dollars of that bill are very, very small because you can only make money off the deregulated amount. And of the deregulated amount, SDG and E has to take the vast majority of the money for it because why? They're the ones keeping my lights on, right? So now we're a middleman for somebody else's services inside of the service world. In the product world, you actually are providing the product that your company's making. So your ability to extract income out of that product being sold is much, much higher because it's your product versus let's say the travel industry. If I book a flight through you know, XYZ company, well, Southwest Airlines has to take the vast majority of the money for that flight. Why? Because they're the ones flying me. So the commissionable dollars inside of you selling you know, me a, a, a plane ticket is very, very small. So you can pay out a very tiny bit versus in a product, you have a, a lot of room to pay out a lot of money on. Now, here becomes the challenge of network marketing. How do you have a, a pay plan that can pay out enough money to the field, but at the same time have a product at a low enough price point to deliver on the promise of the industry? I want to stop for a quick second and really highlight that last point. When I was taking a serious look at the skincare industry, I started noticing a lot of things that really stood out to me. Number one is you see the fact that skincare companies across the board are dominating the network marketing industry. If you look at the top 10 billion dollar companies, nine out of the top 10 are in the skincare market. In fact, of the top 19, 16 are in the top 19 with a skincare line. And let's look at why that is. Well, take away network marketing. If you were to look at the retail market of what people are paying for products at those department stores, they're paying top dollar. Network marketing can come in, undercut the retail market, offer higher quality products for less money, direct to consumer, but still have enough of a profit margin built in to fund an aggressive, socially modern pay plan. On top of that, guys, a big part of the conversation is branding and retention. What I've found is that most of us are very, very loyal to the skincare and personal products that we use every day. Think about it. I looked at my own bathroom and I realized I've been using Old Spice deodorant for over a decade. Now, is Old Spice the most life-altering, life-changing deodorant on the market? No, but every time I run out, I go buy more. Think about the soap in your shower. When you run out of soap, do you ever think to yourself, I don't know if I'm going to go buy more this time. I think it's going to stink. <laughs> that never happens. We all buy more every single time. The question isn't, am I going to buy it? It's which one am I going to buy? And so people are very loyal to their brand. My mom's been using Neutrogena face wash for over a decade. My dad's been loyal to Nivea hand cream for seven years. And when we find something, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we just keep buying the same thing over and over and over again. The last part I really want you to understand is positioning yourself in front of an expanding marketplace. If we were talking to you today about getting involved with a vinyl record company, that might be kind of a scary conversation because the market for that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But the anti-aging market specifically inside of the skincare industry is growing by leaps and bounds every single month. Here's what's incredible. The baby boomer generation dictates some of the biggest trends to ever hit our planet. There's over a billion people on this earth that were born between 1946 and 1965, right after World War II. Now this demographic, not only are they the largest, but they actually control two thirds of the money here inside of the United States. What does that mean for you and I? Well, in 2011, the same year that Secret Direct was founded, these people started turning 65 for the very first time. How many of them? 10,000 new baby boomers a day are turning 65 every single day just in North America, and that'll happen for the next 19 years straight. Now, why is that significant? Well, what do 65-year-olds care about? Not looking 65, right? <laughs> the anti-aging industry is growing by a billion dollars a month right now and is poised to only get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, right behind the anti-aging market is men. The second fastest growing demographic of skincare today are men that are getting involved for the very first time in the skincare industry because they're realizing looking good isn't just for women. Everybody wants to stay young, looking good for as long as they can. Now, what does that exactly mean for you and I? 
Here's what I found in business. All ships rise with the tide. If the tide's going up and you have a boat in the water, your boat goes right up with it. Conversely, if the tide's going down and you have a boat in the water, your boat goes down with it. So to bring it all home, the people that get involved with Secret at this stage of the game have the opportunity to go out there and build not only one of the most incredible distributor bases, but one of the most incredible customer bases of all time in the history of this industry. Now, let's go back to the live event to hear what separates Secret from everybody else. The problem that most companies have, you know, and this, we saw this a lot with the juice companies, was you had a product that was much, much more expensive than the retail market. And it was enough of a profit margin inside of that product to pay out a very aggressive pay plan. The challenge was just a consumer who's not financially attached to your model has no incentive to keep buying that product when they can get it at Costco or they can get it at, at you know, Henry's for much, much, much cheaper. So now it becomes a big sign-up game. Well, you're not really focused on building a customer base, you're just building a distributor base. That's a huge thing. Inside of that, I draw out like this. Those of you guys that are listening in here, I'm gonna draw a little pyramid, right? <laughs> now understand, right? Now when people say, oh, is that a pyramid? Da, 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 what do they really mean by that? Is it a scam, right? Because most of us, I think, at this point would agree, like IBM is a pyramid, right? Is there a CEO of that company? Is there a board of directors? Are there some, you know I mean, vice president, president, like all those people there? Is there some maybe regional directors? How about middle management? Down at the very, very bottom, you have the employees. Actually, in today's economy, you probably have people underneath them called temps, temporaries, right? <laughs> the temporaries want to be full-time. The full-time wants to be the managers. The managers want to be the regional director. The vice president wants the president's job. Everyone wants the person above them spot. And most of us understand, inside of that corporate pyramid, the people at the top make all the money. People at the bottom do all the work. People at the top golf on Wednesdays, you know I mean, drive nice cars. People at the bottom, you know I mean, complain about people at the top. <laughs> right? So understand, right? You can sell whatever you want inside of this industry inside of the opportunity. I'm gonna call this right here, this is the opportunity, why? Because for the most part, people are gonna get involved because if there's a real way that they can make money for their family and get out of the 40, 40, 40 plan and actually make money, you can get them in. All you have to do is show them how what you're doing is better than what they're doing at their job and you got them. But what I look at are the people down here at the very bottom called your user or your customer. These are people that have no financial attachment to what you're doing. They're buying your product just because they like your product. That's it. And the real litmus test of a valuable network marketing company is can your product stand on its own in the marketplace with no opportunity attached to it? How does it stack up against the retail market? And this for me was such a, a huge thing because I've seen companies that have a phenomenal opportunity, quote unquote, the timing is good, the pay plan is aggressive, but the product can't stand on its own. I've seen other companies that have phenomenal products that can stand on their own, but the challenge is the company is not paying out enough money to make it lucrative enough to spend your time and effort building a company there. Now, here's what I know for sure. Just because a company has great products, that is not a good enough reason to go work for that company. How many guys like In-N-Out Burger? Right? I like In-N-Out, they make a good hamburger. Unfortunately, I cannot work at In-N-Out Burger because their comp plan is not conducive to the lifestyle that I want. I cannot wear a paper hat and say, would you like fries with that, sir? And accomplish my dreams. Now, if you're listening and you work at In-N-Out, we love you. I mean, it's a, good place to, it's a good place to start, it's not a good place to finish. You know what I mean? So, but understand, right? You need to have both a great pay plan and a product that can stand on its own. So what impressed me about just the product which you've heard so much about, and I'm not gonna belabor that anymore, but we've sold $800 million with no opportunity. We've sold it at two and a half times markup. Can we continue to sell it at a discount? Absolutely. And you don't have to take my word for it. We've done it in 40 countries to the tune of 800 million. We're gonna keep doing it. 